Hi, welcome to the June 2020 System Internals Update. My name is Mark Arsinovich. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft Azure. I'm also co-creator and I continue to develop the System Internals utilities. This month, we have three updates for you. The first is Auto Runs version 13.98. For those of you not familiar, Auto Runs is a utility that shows you the images that are set to automatically start up or run at various points during the Windows lifecycle. For example, it will show you what services and what drivers, what run auto start files are configured. The update in this release is that it now shows the Windows Defender binary as a valid Windows binary. The reason it didn't previously is that Auto Runs has a built-in list of directories in which files that are signed as being part of Windows have to be located for Auto Runs to show them as Windows binaries. The reason it has this kind of check in place is that we've seen malware before take legitimate Windows binaries, place them in directories outside of those protected directories, and then execute spoofs, spoofing attacks where it looks like it's a legitimate Windows process but that's been hijacked. Now, Auto Runs recognizes the directory that the Windows Defender binary is located in as one of those valid locations. The second update is SigCheck 2.8. In this release of SigCheck, a tool that shows you file version information and file signing information, as well as what certificates are in your various certificate stores, now shows you a signing chain, even when a certificate in that signing chain is considered untrusted. For example, it's been revoked or it's out of date. It also now adds a dash P switch, which lets you specify a trust publisher GUID. That trust publisher GUID that defaults internally is the Windows Trust Publisher. So by default, it will show you whether a file is validly signed against that Trust Publisher. But we've had requests from ISVs as well as Windows developers themselves that are checking files against different Trust Publishers. And now this dash P switch lets you specify those. Let's go take a quick look at SigCheck in action. So let's see what the previous version of SigCheck, version 2.73, would show for a valid signed file. And I'm going to use notepad.exe as that example. And you can see that the verified status is signed. Then we see the file version information. But if I specify the dash I switch, I'm going to see the full certificate signing chain, which includes the timestamp countersigners on top of the Windows certificates used to sign this file. If I point it, though, at a file that it has an invalid trust chain like this, tool check DLL, you can see that I get in the verified status that a certificate chain process but terminated in a root certificate which is not trusted by the trust provider. If I specify dash I because I want to look at the certificate chain and see which certificates might not be trusted, unfortunately it has no effect. And so that's where this update now will show you the full signing chain even if there's an invalid certificate in the chain, and you, now you can see that there's a couple here that have untrusted roots. So that's a quick look at SigCheck. The dash P switch, which I mentioned, that lets you specify the trust GUID. You can see that flag here, which lets you specify a default trust policy, uh, a custom trust policy. You can see that the built-in one that it verifies against is here, this WinTrust Action Generic Verify V2, which is the trust publisher for Windows signed binaries. So that's a, a quick look at the SigCheck updates. The last update is Sysmon version 11.10, which is the big one. The last release of Sysmon version 11.0 introduced file delete archiving so you could capture files as attackers were trying to delete them off your system for forensics. That release introduced a couple of regressions. One in the file filtering logic that caused slow file opens off SMB shares, especially for Office documents that we got several reports of. The second is that in the process of adding the ability to detect process creates for WSL processes, Sigmon version 11 stopped reporting process creates on earlier versions of Windows 10. Those regressions have now been addressed in 11.10. As far as new features in 11.10, one of them is that a new is all condition filter has been added so that you can specify multiple condition, conditions and require all of them be satisfied before an event is triggered. The second feature, which is the significant one, is that it will now capture alternate data stream contents when the contents are text and they're less than one kilobyte in size. 
might be saying, what's the point of capturing contents of file streams right into the event log? Well, when you download files from the web, what browsers do is attach something called the mark of the web, which is an alternate data stream that has the name zone.identifier that has text inside of it. And in newer versions of the zone identifier logic that is built into Windows, it will report which URL the file came from. So by storing that right in Sysmon, as long as also getting the hashes of those alternate data streams and the hashes of the primary contents of the files being downloaded, now you can see exactly which website the file came from. And that can be helpful in forensics when, for example, you're getting drive-by downloads of malicious files. Let's go take a look at Sysmon in action. So here I have a sample Sysmon configuration file. You can see that for all event types, with one exception file, create stream hash. I've got this filter which is on match include with no filter conditions. What that is effectively doing is making all of these exclude filters because no include filters match on any event, so we'll exclude all of those events. The exception here is the inverse with on match exclude with no exclude filters, meaning if we're not going to exclude anything, then by default we're going to include anything. So we're going to see all of the events that match file create stream hash in the event log. Let's go create some of those, and I'm going to just echo hello to a file to create a default data stream. That's the main data stream for any file and file create stream hash will capture the hashes for those when we've got it enabled and there's a match. But now in this release of Sysmon, if it's less than one kilobyte in size and text, it will also capture the alternate data stream contents or the data stream contents. And if we dump to an alternate data stream the same text, we should see the same hashes for both of those. So let's go take a look in Event Viewer and do a refresh here. And sure enough, there's those two events. Here's the first one. And you can see that the target file name is the out.txt. And here's the hashes for that data that I dumped into the default data stream. And here's the contents as we'd expect. Hello. And then if we go look at the next event up, this is for the second echo into the stream alternate data stream here. And you can see that the hashes and the contents were captured for this as well. But where this becomes really interesting is for file downloads, where, like I mentioned, the mark of the web or the zone identifier alternate streams will capture where the file came from. I'm going to show you that in action, but first I'm going to Turn, enable Procmon so we can see what the browser is doing underneath the hood as I go to sysinternals and I download sysmon itself. So if I say save, running a security scan, now I've got that file downloaded. And when we go to Procmon, we're going to see a bunch of events here. Those events are create files and write files, and you can see here that this write file, for example, we see that there's three of them. One that's at offset 0, length 26, one at offset 26, length 76, and one at offset 102, length 60, all to this partial zone.identifier alternate data stream. And what it's doing there is actually writing and appending information about that mark of the web. When we go into Event Viewer to look at what Sysmon captured, now we're going to see a bunch of these alternate data stream hashes. And here's the first one. And you can see that it's created the main data stream here. We didn't capture any contents, presumably because it wasn't taxed or too long. Here's the second, and this one is to that zone identifier. You can see the hash here, and you can see the contents here. So this is that first write, zone transfer, zone ID equals three, which is untrusted web. Here's the next one to the main data stream. Here's the third write as it's downloading and appending. And you can see here it appended now the referrer URL. And this is going to be interesting for forensics, HTTP docs, Microsoft, Sysinternals, download Sysmon. So now we can see if downloads are coming from the web and it's potentially malicious, exactly where they came from. And then finally, the last one here completes the mark of the web and tells us the exact URL where that download came from. So we see the refer and the host URL for that download. And if we go take a look at Procmon, we're going to see that the fact is that any browser you use 
is going to capture that information. And that's because when we look at the stack trace for that particular event, I'm writing Mark of the Web, it's generated by a file called urlmon, which all the browsers, mainstream browsers, use. Uh, they use this com class that invokes it to download files and will automatically get that Mark of the Web information installed on top of them. So that's a quick look at the Sysmon Mark of the Web file capture. So those are this month's updates, auto runs, SIGCHECK, and Sysmon. As always, feel free to provide feedback on these features or make suggestions for new ones in these tools or any other tool in the SysInternals forums. Follow SysInternals on Twitter with the SysInternals handle. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Rosinovich, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.